So today we're going to talk about a little bit about the arthritis in general and then but the main topic is going to be the osteoarthritis. So it's a, a type of arthritis underneath the whole category of um, flu of other arthritis. So those are a few facts <coughs> and I got those facts from the CDC. So we have about 52.5 million of people uh, in the United States, adults have some form of arthritis. And about 22.7% of the adults in the United States has, have been reported that the, um, the doctor diagnosed with the arthritis. By 2030, so this is a prediction, an estimated 67 million of Americans, 18 years and older, will have um, doctor diagnosed arthritis. So this is a very busy slide, but the, um, this is a, some of the statistics about the uh, joint pains and arthritis. So like for example, with the lower back pain, we have about 59 million. Neck pain, about 30.1 million. Osteoarthritis, which is the most common form of arthritis, we have about 27 million. So that's about like a quarter of a, our population. And the carpal tunnel syndrome, it's not arthritis per se, but it give you lots of patients will feel joint pains. So I put it here, it's about four to 10 million people. Gout, um, people probably heard it a lot, it give you lots of pain. So it's inflammatory arthritis, it's about eight million people in the United States. Sjogren's um, is a form of uh, autoimmune disease, so we have about uh, 0.4 to 3.1 million of uh, U.S. population. Spinal arthritis. So these are the arthritis involved the spine and also the other joints too. So we have those about up to 2.4 million. And the rheumatoid arthritis is about 1.3 million of the United States adults because uh, they have a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis too. So that's down here. So that's about like a near 300,000. And then we have polymyalgia rheumatica, and this gives the joint pains in elderly, or more in people older than 50 years old. So this is about 700,000. And the systemic lupus, so we have up to about 322,000. And the systemic sclerosis, so that's about 49,000. And the cause of the joint pains, so whenever a person perceives their joints hurt, one is because the true arthritis, it's involving the joint itself, and it can be the problems that's involving the soft tissues surrounding the joints, like the tendons, ligaments, bursa, et cetera. And the, uh, or it can be just due to the pain conditions, like a fibromyalgia, or there are some indirect causes, like a couple tunnel, I said it's not the arthritis itself because it's due to the nerve got pinched. But it, the, um, you know, that can give you perceived as the joint pains. And the, um, in lots of those conditions, when you do the imaging, like the x-rays or MRIs, they can be normal, but the pain can be great. Especially at the early stage, you know, the imaging may not detect any of the changes. And the type, two major types of arthritis. One major type is inflammatory. The other we call non-inflammatory. I'll explain that. The inflammatory arthritis, it's usually related to the rheumatological conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Sjogren's, scleroderma, myositis, vasculitis, polymyalgia rheumatica, and the other crystal, what we call crystal-related arthritis, like a gout or a pseudogout. Gout, you heard a lot, and it's due to the gout crystals, the uric acid crystals. Pseudogout is usually due to the calcium crystals. This more happen in elderly. And the uh, spinal arthropathy, again, this is involving the arthritis involving the spine, and the peripheral joints. So they have a psoriatic arthritis. That is the arthritis related to a skin condition called a psoriasis. And reactive arthritis, it means it's, it's the reactive to 
some triggers like uh, due to the infections or due to underlying intestinal issues or even just simply people have a flu or cold. You know, it can trigger your immune system and cause arthritis symptoms. So these are all called reactive arthritis. And ankylosing spondylitis is a specific kind of uh, inflammatory arthritis of the back. Non-inflammatory arthritis, it doesn't mean your joints are not inflamed. They are still inflamed, it just systemically, it's not like inflammatory arthritis, because inflammatory arthritis is a whole body, whole system disease. And the uh, non-inflammatory arthritis, we would say, you still have inflammation of the joints, but more locally. So this is mainly the osteoarthritis. And this is just the, uh, a picture describing that besides the true arthritis, you can have the periarticular, that means it's the, uh, the tissues surrounding the joints, like a bur bursa, tendon, ligaments. So these are, can be inflamed and give you joint pains. And lots of people do so, oh, well, I have arthritis because my joint hurt. But maybe they are just due to those soft tissues surrounding the joint. And again, inflammatory arthritis is a systemic disease. It's a whole body is inflamed. It can involve all these organs involved, like a skin, liver, kidneys, um, lymph nodes, lungs, blood vessels. It's a lots of lots of systemic organs can be involved with the inflammatory arthritis. Now we are going to talk more concentrated on the osteoarthritis. The uh, osteoarthritis, also known as degenerative joint disease, it is the disease of the entire joint that's involving the uh, cartilage here and the, uh, the lining of the joints, the capsules, the ligaments, and the underlying bones. So over here with the osteoarthritis, the cartilage start to wear off. And then you said this here, the, it's losing the cartilage. And when it's become more severe, the underlying bones can be uh, destroyed. So this is the, it caused the um, inflammatory process in the joint and eventually caused the pain and the joint stiffness. And this is the most common form of the arthritis. So this is the, uh, some images about the uh, osteoarthritis. So this is the normal knee joint. You see the things are very smooth and the whitish thing is the, uh, the cartilage, the cover of the joints. And the, uh, over here, it's become uh, weared off. So the cartilage are gone and you see the erosions and then you see even underlying bones. They are not smooth anymore and they have the bone spurs and they have erosions. So these are basically the, just the uh, uh, graphic describing the uh, arthritis. The risk factors for the osteoarthritis. So these are the risk of developing osteoarthritis and the, um, we can have some genetic predisposition such as age, gender, usually female more than the male, and the family history. And the other factors, very, very important, overweight, and the previous trauma to the joints, and the repetitive strain or the use of the joints, and the improper joint alignment, and, the, and also the gait. So for osteoarthritis, and lots of people call this wear and tear or come in more in the, with the age, so we have uh, idiopathic. Um, it just, it, whenever we call the uh, idiopathic, it means the, uh, nobody knows what's causing it. Um, it can be localized or generalized or secondary. I think in our daily life, we probably would see the secondary the most. Are, you know, because every day when you walk, when you do things, it's always a trauma to the joints. And the athletes play sports, so trauma can cause it, and the, uh, some uh, inborn, you're born with certain deformities and which you um, causing different, for example, the leg lengths are different, so you put the one burden on one leg more than the other. Um, that's predisposed you to develop arthritis. And then some metabolic endocrine issues, like you have thyroid issues and the uh, um, 
And like for example, some people with a hemochromatosis, which is the condition have a lot of iron, too much iron in the body. So some of those can predispose you to develop degenerative arthritis. And if some of this nerve got damaged, they don't really feel that well. And whatever the things they do, they don't have as much protection. So it can prone for the joint damage too. And some medical causes, such as surgeries. Pretty much all the surgeries to the joints because a damaged integrity of the joints by doing the procedure, by doing the, um, just by cutting through, it will eventually, down the road, many years later, will develop arthritis of that joint. Most commonly affected the joint places are the joints that we use the most, like the hands, the spine, and the weight-bearing joints, like the hips, the hips and the knees, and these are the spine, hands, and the feet. Feet is also weight-bearing. Sorry. Uh. So what are the osteoarthritis symptoms? Joint pain and stiffness, and the joint can become enlarged you see that my, my joints become knobby, and also the swelling of the joints too. So that's the knee and the, uh, you know, the fingers you see. These are called the habitants nodes, and these usually if the, the nodes coming on those joints, we call them bouchards. And also you can hear the cracking or grinding noise with the joint movement and decrease the function of the joints. How the osteoarthritis being diagnosed? Most often the doctors would detect osteoarthritis based upon the typical symptoms, such as pain, swelling, and stiffness, and on the results of the physical exam. So we actually will feel your joints and see if the joints are swollen, the range of motion, and then to see if any deformities or not. And in some cases, the uh, pathology, it, most of time, it means you know, radiographic changes, like the joint space narrowing. Also, fights are the bone spurs and the uh, bone sclerosis. And, and these are the, uh, on the imaging, we see the, the bone, like a whitish looking on the, on the x-ray. And x-ray or other imaging tests may be useful also to see the extent of the disease and or to help to rule out other joint problems. So these are the few images. So the hand osteoarthritis, and this is the picture you will see on the x-ray. You see those are bone spurs enlarged, and the, uh, the joint space are lost. They are completely collapsed. Normally, they would more or, more or less look like those joints. And this is the um, arthritis of the hip. This is mild, and this is very, very severe. You can see the joint space is completely lost, and the, uh, this is the, the bone from the femur is already all the way almost inside the other bone. So this is the picture of the, uh, or x-ray of the osteoarthritis of the knee. You can see on this side, it's already bone on bone. The cartilages are gone. This side still has some cartilage, so cartilage is usually it's transparent on the x-ray. This is the uh, example of the severe, you know, the uh, bone spurs or osteophytes. This, this is the x-ray of the spine with a severe osteoarthritis with the bone spurs and also the, uh, the, the disc space is already gone. How is the osteoarthritis being treated? Um, lots of people said, well, unfortunately, this is the type of arthritis we don't really have anything to to help us, why are you still talking to us about this? And it is true, there's no proven treatment 
that can reverse the joint damage from the osteoarthritis. So currently, the goal is very important is to maintain the quality of life. And the treatment is to reduce the pain and improve the functions. Most often, this is possible with the, it's not like a, we are helpless. We still can help you, you know, to live more, um, more of a normal life rather than just suffering from the pains. So this can be the mixture of, uh, we can do this through the mixture of physical, physical measures, drug therapy, and sometimes surgery. So now, we're gonna talk about few physical measures. Exercise, bicycle, swimming, jogging, they are all very helpful. So these two exercises are actually non-weight bearing. So for people with um, arthritis of the weight bearing joints, like especially the knees or um, uh, the feet, so these two probably more friendly. And the, if you are able to jog, you can still keep on doing the jogging. Weight loss is very, very important, especially for the weight bearing joints. And the, uh, because you know, our weight, our joints actually carrying the, uh, the burden of the uh, six times your body weight. So that's each, each step you go, that's a six times your body weight that's putting on the knee joints. And the physical therapy. And then there are some supporting devices, like uh, using the cane, the knee sleeves. This is actually the uh, weight unloading uh, braces. So the theory is, if you can wear the brace, that the, uh, you're not going to have any weight putting on the knee joint. Maybe the cartilage can regrow back and uh, to help the symptoms. Um, there are some studies support this, but there are also some studies that does not support it. So this is still uh, more controversial, and I do see in some orthopedic um, surgeon's office, they provide this. Acupuncture is another, um, uh, you know, we've been using acupuncture to try to help the pain. And the, um, there are several studies already done to, the, uh, to see if the acupuncture would help the knee pain, etc. Um, the most recent study published just recently didn't really show it has a significant improvement of the pain, but it doesn't have that much harm. So if you try, someone if you tried acupuncture, it doesn't help you, you don't, you're not to go through with it, but um, if it gives you some form of relief of pain, you can certainly give it a try. And the spa or mud clay, those therapies are usually helpful. Both are temporary, but for somebody who has agony of pain 24-7, even just a few hours of pain relief is still a gift. Now we are talking up, we're going to talk about the, uh, some medications that can help the arthritis pains. Um, the topical medications that you apply to the affected joint area so these some examples are capsaicin cream, and this is made up actually from the hot pepper, um, Hungarian hot pepper. Um, so this is the, uh, the, the purpose of this is the, uh, supposedly the hot pepper can deplete the chemicals from the nerve ending that will sense the pain. So that chemical is called substance P, so the uh, hot pepper suppose can get rid of those chemicals from the nerve ending, so you're not feeling the pain as much. And these two actually are made of the same medication, but in different, oh, I'm sorry. This is a different patch. This is the, uh, the medication that's made of lidocaine. It's a topical numbing medication. So this is the, uh, also called a lidoderm, and then you put the patch topically uh, to help the pain. And this is actually the uh, patch that made up the medication um, called the diclofenac. Diclofenac, um, a brand name called Voltaren, it's also available in the pill form. It's uh, anti-inflammatory. It's the medication similar to Motrin, slightly stronger than Motrin, but so this is actually the patch has medication in it, uh, anti-inflammatory medication. The pills. So the pills most commonly used are acetaminophen is also Tylenol, um, and the um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories 
um, we call NSAIDs, such as Motrin, Aleve, Ibuprofen. So Tylenol is more friendly to the stomach and the kidney. And anti-inflammatory, if you take a Motrin, Aleve, those kind of medication, um, it does have side effects on the stomach. So always remember to take it with the food and, the, um, and watch for the stomach symptoms. And the, if you use it for long-term high dosage, it does have the potential causing liver kidney issues. So it's a very good idea to have the kidney and liver monitored if you take the medication regularly. Tylenol or estaminophen can also have a liver toxicity. So we usually do not, FDA recommended not to exceed 3,000 milligrams in 24 hours. Most recently, uh, FDA approved Cymbalta to use for the knee osteoarthritis pains. This, uh, this is also an um, antidepressant and also FDA also approved to use on treating the fibromyalgia pains. In some patients, if the pain is extremely severe, may need some narcotics, but the narcotics, just be aware, it can be habit-forming. Now, the injections. If you try the um, conservative treatment, the exercise, the physical therapy, and you're taking the pills, you're still having lots of pains. So the injections can be tried. And they, uh, inject, this is just the example. Injection is the, uh, we put the medication directly into the joint. So this is the example, like a medication directly would go into the knee joint. There are two types of medication. Uh, we would for, for the inject we use for the injection. It's a cortisone injection or the steroid injection. The injection usually be done by mixture of the steroid, the top ones are the steroid and the numbing medication. And lots of you may heard of, of a rooster comb injection or some form of a lubricant injection. So this is what they're talking about. Uh, we call the visco supplement, and it's made of a hyaluronic acid. So we have five of them on the market. Four of them are made of rooster combs, and the, this one is made from the bacterial cells. And the, um, so this is the thin visc. It can be done by one shot or three shots, or ser series of three shots, a weekly apart. The one shot is called thin visc one, and the regular thin visc is one shot a week, um, for three weeks. So this is a efflexor. Uh, it's a series of a three shots. Uh, Hyogen is a series of five shots. Supars can be done either three shots or five shots. Orso visc is a three or four shots. So these shots are the, uh, the theory behind this is that they are, they do look like a thick jelly, clear jelly. Um, a, normally our joint fluid does have this in the joint fluid. And the theory, this is actually not a new medication at all. It has been around for a very, very long time. It just FDA in the past did not approve it uh, to use for the uh, osteoarthritis. And the, the theory was the, uh, when people have osteoarthritis, the hyaluronic acid level would drop from the joint fluid. And the, theory is if we can replenish this, maybe we can more or less retain the normal composition of the joint fluid. It may provide some anti-inflammatory or nutrition to um, nourish the um, cartilage and the bone. Um, so it is a thick gel. Um, it may provide some lubrication benefit. These two are relatively new, but the bottom line of this is the, uh, they are not actually, like the other treatment, none of them are actually treating the arthritis per se, re reverse the joint damage, etc. They are all for the managing of pain. So the cryogenic treatment, it's the cold, it's freezing. Um, they can put the probe into the knee and freeze the nerves freeze the nerves that sense the pain. So 
these usually can provide quite a few months of a pain relief. Um, and the radio frequency, it's, um, they use it to either burn or freeze the nerves. So similar concept, it just is through different technology. But the bottom line is they try to temporarily interrupt the nerves so you won't sense the pain. Surgery. If you do everything has done and that your quality of life still impaired, you're just not able to do your daily function, your activities, and the, uh, lots of um, us may want to seek for the surgical intervention. Um, there's um, locally for the arthroscopic surgery, so they are not really cutting you open anything, they just put the scope in. This is more for the um, joints that are still very, very good and then there may be some fragments or something that can be repaired. So they, this is a more conservative procedure, so they can just repair it. When the joint damage is too big, there's nothing really can be repaired at all, and the, uh, the choice will be the joint replacement. But most people with arthritis may not need the surgery. And so whenever you consider surgical interventions, you need to weigh in the risk and the benefit. And the, um, really clearly communicate with your doctors and then you want to see how many surgeries, how many successful surgeries this surgeon has done. And the, uh, don't be afraid to get a second opinion. Supplements is very, very common in those days because you know, the medications, even I mentioned above, like a Tylenol, Motrin, they do have side effects too. So lots of people do like to turn into the uh, supplements. And, um, but many of the over-the-counter supplements, um, we don't have a good research data to support their effectiveness and also the safety. There are a couple supplements. Um, they, NIH did a clinical trial on the glucosamine chondritin. The formula when they did a clinical trial, they used the glucosamine chondritin chloride. But mostly, there are some other studies, especially the studies sponsored by the manufacturers, and then there are some small studies, they use the glucosamine chondritin sulfate. So the NIH study actually was a negative study. It did not say this medication would provide significant on relieving the osteoarthritis pains. Modest benefit on people with severe osteoarthritis. But there are some osteoarthritis experts arguing that the, uh, maybe the formulary was different and that because it seemed to be the successful ones often use the sulfate based and the, um, the NIH trial was using the chloride based. But the either way, currently American College of Rheumatology and also European College Association do not really just tell, they don't want us to tell patients this is beneficial or use it, but because it's a dietary supplement, um, you can give it a try. It's quite expensive. I usually tell my patients you can try for six months. If it doesn't really help, probably just don't waste any more money. And uh, another one is the avocado soybean on top of the fireballs. It's also abbreviated as ASU. This one does have some clinical data support, supporting its benefit on the osteoarthritis. And then the uh, calcium, vitamin D, omega-3, those are daily supplements. They are not particularly, you know, the, uh, have the data supporting it's going to help you arthritis pain. But in general, it a, a helps the um, uh, general health. Especially vitamin D is very important in people with autoimmune disease. So how to prevent osteoarthritis? First, we need to maintain the healthy body weight and we need to exercise regularly. Normally, we would recommend 30 minutes moderate activities 
at least five days a week. And then we need, need to learn, protect the joints, and listen to your joints. It's not no pain, no gain. So if you're doing some activities and then your joints start to hurt, you may want to change to different form of activity. We still encourage you still do the exercise, still being active. But maybe like if you're running, your knees are hurting, maybe you want to change it to swimming or bicycle, stationary bike. Uh, just do these, keep active, but just do the activity that's not going to hurt you. And then we need to repeat, to avoid repeat repetitive stress on the joints. And also try to avoid injuries and keep the proper position. These are the take home messages. Osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis and, the, um, and can occur together with other types of arthritis. Like uh, for example, somebody suffers from rheumatoid arthritis or gout and the, um, these are inflammations going on in the joints. Eventually they could cause the joint structural damage. So these are going to evolve. It's not turning to osteoarthritis, but the osteoarthritis is going to develop in those joints. So you can have both osteoarthritis and the rheumatoid arthritis going on at the same time. And then so it gives doctor sometimes a hard time to differentiate your joint pain is due to the active inflammation from the rheumatoid arthritis or it's actually, it's just from this osteoarthritis. Exercise is an important part of the um, uh, osteoarthritis treatment because it can help to decrease the joint pains and improve function. Um, the goal for the treatment of osteoarthritis is to reduce the pain and improve function. At the present, there's no treatment can, reserve, can reverse the damage of the osteoarthritis. And uh, we are trying very hard to find a way to slow, the, to slow down the damage of the joints and to reverse the joint damage. And the, uh, we have very good medication for rheumatoid arthritis, but currently we don't have anything that's effective like uh, the medications for rheumatoid arthritis and for osteoarthritis. So these are the, the informations are mostly from the American College of Rheumatology, and that's their website and also the CDC for the statistic data. These are some resources you can go to look for information regarding the uh, arthritis. So American College of Rheumatology Arthritis Foundation, so these are um, autoimmune disease, lupus foundation, scleroderma foundation. This is the spondyloarthropathy, the arthritis of the spine and the Sjogren's Foundation and the Mausitis Association. So that's the end of my talk. Um, any questions, I'll be very happy to answer.